Warning, this episode contains strong sexual themes. Listener discretion is advised. This is Tales of Swordfall. Episode 7, Where Dragons Lay. Tabby! You were napping at the apartment! I am napping at the apartment, yes. Um, so... What time of day is it? Um, it's getting to be, like, mid-afternoon, heading toward late afternoon. And, um, this is probably about the time that Taz shows up. And, uh, Tabby, you can hear somebody at the door. (sighs) Does the cat stretch, takes her time, yawns really big, you know, swishes the tail back and forth, butt out. Ah, I guess I should get up. Ugh. Uh, okay. Um, goes over to the door. Yeah, hello. Tabby? Oh, it is you, Taz. This is your place. Why are you knocking? Um, because my arms are full of groceries. Could you open the door, please? Oh, yes, here. Great. Thank you. Um, where are the others? I don't know. They went out to give me a hoodie. I think uh, some stuff happened, and uh, you know, we don't. We, you know how things are with this team. <laughs> so Taz, as you start exploring your apartment, you've noticed that somebody's cleaned up the um, your rooms thoroughly, and um, also that the family picture that you would have. Is like slightly askewed, like somebody had picked it up and set it back down. And um, you have like basically wine and flour in your pantries. Like someone took all the rest of the food that you did have and already had, you know, consumed it. Yeah, I think Taz predicted something like that would happen. Um, so she's gonna straighten the picture on the mantle, and then, um, put her groceries away. Tabby, you can have some dried fish now, but the fresh fish is for dinner tonight for everyone. Oh, oops. And, uh, Tabby just looks at the, uh, remaining head and tail that she was, uh, devouring. Haha, <laughs> you, you should have tasted these things before I had, uh, eyes on the salmon. <laughs> All right, well, guess we'll figure something else out for dinner. Um, so I went by that, uh, the guard station earlier today, and I cashed in on Bounty, and I actually had a thought what to do with the money, but I need to speak with the others about it, make sure they're all right with it before we do. Do you know where they went? I think they want to get a cape, a cloak for me. You know, I went on a little crazy adventure while everybody was out. Uh, some things happened. I don't really recall all that much. Uh, but I, I know I needed another coat. Okay. We probably uh, should leave uh, this area relatively soon, I'm thinking, because... <laughs> yes. Well, I guess it's not the first apartment I'll get kicked out of. Um, uh, well, there are a few errands I need to run. Um, uh, they went to get clothes. If you have another cloak I can borrow, perhaps, you know, put over my hood, I'll go with you. Sure. I go, I fish out, um, kind of an older, it's a little threadbare, but it'll, it'll do. It's an older blue cloak. That'll work. It'll bring out the green in my eyes. Wait, I don't want to be seen, do I? Mm. Aren't you good with makeup? I am. You might want to disguise me. Okay. Should I make a roll for that? Yes. Um, 
If you have a disguise kit, you can roll that, and it looks like you just did. It's, it's a decent disguise. I mean, uh, tabaxis... I mean, have you ever worked on a tabaxi with, like, putting makeup on before? No. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the, the extra fur probably doesn't help. But yeah, I mean, I... Uh, not perfect, but it'll do. Yeah, Tabby, you look like a little bit more made up than usual. Uh, so yeah, uh, Taz, you're made up. You have a cloak on. Uh, yeah, you're disguised in a way. Um, um, in um, I'll also say just for convenience sakes, you probably remember what store they uh. Well, basically, tied you up in front of. <laughs> you know, maybe instead of going there, we should get some more food. Some more of that fish? Uh, yes. And I have a few other errands to run, but I, I would like to speak to them about a payment from the bounty before that. Right. I, I'm sure they'll be back. We, just, we probably just, just should go out for errands and then come back. And uh, by the time we come back, they'll be here. I suppose if you'd rather do that, um, shall we? We shall. All right, quick question for uh, Ray, Stu, and Flea. Uh, were you guys just trying to get out of the shop altogether? Uh, probably back Not up to the main office and unlock. I, I, get, I don't know if it's one of those things where you have to have a key to unlock it or just like leaving. You could probably just leave it and, you know. I, on my way out, I grab a cloak for Tabby and I grab a couple of Belkin outfits. Cool. Uh, Stu, Stu has no intention of actually leaving the building, but he will wait upstairs for Krakatur to get done. Okay. And what about Flea? Are you just going to get out of here? or? Are there any cool bandanas? Yeah, there would be cool bandanas. I want a sparkly one. He, they probably have. Uh, this shop probably has a very sparkly, well-designed bandana. All right, I snag that and then I follow Ray. And uh, so Stu's staying behind. Okay. Um, yeah. I. Uh, where do you guys head from the shop? Are you going back to the apartment or? I say, uh, Flea. Should we wait outside for him, or should we go back to Taz's place? We should probably go find Taz. I mean, she's been gone a while. Yeah. I'm sure she's just working, you know, like a regular person. What's work? Uh, it's what people do to make money. Oh, is that what Cracker Tur's doing right now? Yes. Okay. Definitely. Okay, I'll follow you. Uh, uh, okay, well, uh, I'll just, yeah, we'll start making our way back to the apartment. And... Somewhere between the apartment and the shops, uh, you actually do see Taz and Tabby. And Tabby, you see, well, at least Ray. I don't know about Flea. Oh, I've got my sparkly bandana on, so I'm pretty easy to spot right now. Yeah, <laughs> Flea has an overly ridiculous, gaudy, sparkly bandana, which, if there I was... I think it looks quite nice. Thank you. If there was a concept of satellites, the satellites probably probably could see it. So. That's exactly what I was going for. I kind of figured. <laughs> oh, um, oh, Tabby, I got your cloak thing. Shh, be quiet. Don't don't bring attention. Oh, 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 all right, all right. Thanks. Taz, um, it's good to see you. You too. Uh, Krakatur is going to be a few minutes, um, and Stu is probably waiting for him. Uh, we can talk about that later. Um, what are you guys doing? Well, I had picked up some fish for dinner, but, uh, I'm afraid Tabby here ate it, so we need some more. Oh. Wasn't specified until after the fact. These things happen. <laughs> Understandable. Right. Understandable. Should we, should... We accompany you, or meet you back at your place? If you want. I did have uh, one thing I wanted to discuss with the group. I suppose it would be better if 
Pakateur was here. Will he be long, do you think? Probably. No. Probably. No, I don't think so. Nope. He'll be a minute. He'll be a few minutes. Um Ray okay. is super embarrassed. <laughs> How long does work normally take? Um that kind of work, it's it can take anywhere from a minute to a couple hours, so <laughs> depending on Krakatur's um mm. Profession, anyway. yeah, I got it. Do I actually want to know what you've been up to? I haven't been up to <laughs> <laughs> Months. It's gonna be a while. <laughs> I haven't been up uh, uh, we were just shopping and the Krakatur took the fancy of one of the shopkeepers and so they are spending a little bit of quality time together. I see. Um yeah. yes. Yes. Good for him. It, yeah. Uh-huh. He's having his fun, so he won't be part of this discussion. Um, I dropped by the guard station uh, earlier today, and I picked up the bounty uh, for the man with the necklace, and oh. I had a thought for what to do with the money. Oh, uh, what were you thinking? Well, we could either divide it up amongst ourselves, or I thought, because several of us almost died the other night, we could spend it on healing potions. Uh, that's actually a really good idea. Um, there's actually something that happened while you were gone that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, there's this, uh, we, we of course have this bounty for no lander, um, but Stu, I think, met somebody who has a bounty out for that person that I was actually looking for. Um, the... Uh, Belka is is offering a sizable sum for um, the return of of him to the to the country, uh, dead or alive. Um, and I figured since it was, it, it kind of felt like a personal um, thing, so I I, I accepted. Um, I don't know if you are interested in, in coming or or not. Um, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, we just uh, have to find him. I can probably help with that. I'm sure you can, Flea, and I like pet him. Uh, but until then, you know, when, until we're all back together, of course, we can um, we can go buy some healing potions. Healing potions would probably be the wisest decision. Yes. Tabby, do you know where That's to? That's fine with me. You? I'm not from Swordfall. <laughs> Taz would know the area better. Well? Um, yes, I, I believe I know an apothecary who might carry some healing potions. And as you're saying that, Taz, someone bumps into you. Ray looks at them. They were just walking off, minding their own business. They were just kind of rude and didn't even say excuse me. Can I see if they tried to take something from her? They definitely tried to pickpocket me. I want to check all of my pockets. I have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hop down and start following whoever bumped into her just at a distance. Yeah. Um. Whoever wants to check if that was actually a pickpocket, give me an investigation. Would it be oh, okay? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of an obvious uh, bump and go. I cast Told Person. Man, that spell. <laughs> Can I find, tell how much she took? Um, Where do you keep your money? Like, do you keep it, like, in a coin purse on your side, or do you keep it, like, well hidden? I do have a coin purse at my side. It never has more than ten gold pieces in it. Um, I have uh, pockets on my coat, both of which I never put more than a couple, like a handful of gold in. And I have like hidden little pouches in the uh, lining of my coat and um, in my pants and under my belt and stuff because I've been robbed before. I've been the one robbing people before. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy was good enough that he actually basically took everything on the outside. 
in that one little bump. That's like 30 gold pieces. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, he totally feels his check, and uh, this uh, elf is standing there um, frozen. I just immediately reach out and, like like a mom grab, cast the spell at him, uh, and pull my hand closer, and then I walk up to him. And I look him right in his stupid face. And I say, you're going to regret that. And I take, I, I look for everything that he's got. I rifle through his stuff. I, uh... I jump up on his back and make him real uncomfortable and, like, start smelling him all over. Um, you probably knock him off balance and he ends up falling, which he can't really, you know, help but to fall down. <laughs> oh, flee, come on. And as what? He, now you can loot him. As he yeah. falls down, just all the stuff spills out of his pockets. Like, there's a, like, pan flute and, like, a bunch of gold and little gold pouches. Uh, there's even, like, a bouquet in his like inside pocket that like sticks out he, it's kind of like you know when you knock him down it's like opening a pinata of stolen goods i uh taz how much money are you missing um i pat my pockets oh uh, 31 gold pieces i find the 31 gold pieces and i toss it back to her thank you Nice. What should we, what should we do with him, Taz? You should take all of his money and everything else. I mean, it's the tax he pays from stealing and getting caught, right? I say we should turn him into the gods. After we take his stuff. Not all of it. We need proof that he stole things. Tabby, why don't you t or Taz? Yes, Tabby, why don't you take what you want, and then um, I'll I'll look away, and uh, then we'll turn him into the guards. Look for anything that could be an ancient artifact or have some sort of magical capabilities. I'll Without you, using any I'll, detect magic, just like I'll just tell you, looking at this. I'll tell you straight up right now, this guy looks like a pretty common pickpocket. He just has really quick hands. So, How, like, oh. How old is he? Yeah. Like, is he an adult How? or is he like a kid? I, uh, roll me, a, roll me a perception to see, like, who this person really is. Like, get a good deep look. Can I do it too? Yes. Well, I did not do so great. <laughs> Tappy and Ray. Well, this boy is actually a woman. And, uh, you notice. Tabby, you would probably notice a uh, certain tattoo, or recognize a certain tattoo. Uh, like, it's, you couldn't really see it at first because, like, it was uh, covered with a shirt collar, but it's um, definitely in Thieves, well, a Thieves Can't symbol. Okay. And I read it, and what does it say? Or if you want, I don't know if you want to whisper it. Or... Oh, I'm going to whisper it. And also remember, even if I didn't have things can't, I could read it, because I have that other thing. Yep. So I know I didn't roll so great on my perception, and I only got an 11, but from what I can see, is this like a professional pickpocket, or is this someone who's desperate, just trying to get by? Uh, You, you can tell that she's basically a professional mm. i as i said in that one bump she got away with all your like outside money tabby what do you think i think uh <laughs> i think this one is trying to be sneaky but failed <laughs> uh but also she is very important important why <laughs> yes why did you decide to, to pick a pickpocket us? Why not have somebody else do it? Why you? Um, she finally, uh, the whole spell person, uh, the whole person spell finally, like, relieves and she relaxes and she gently gets up. Bards always have loose, loose cash on them.
Bots are easy marks, of course, yes, but, <laughs> well, why you? You have other things to be doing, do you not? I have to have fun once in a while. Tabby, as as you know this soon as she said, um, bards are an easy mark, I, like, cocked my hip and put my hand on my hip and pushed my coat out of the way so she could see my rapier and started glaring at her. It's just kind of... She's not really that impressed. And, uh... And she looks at Tabby. I do you... not know her, but I know of her. Who is yeah. she? Hmm, that's a secret. But I have to go now. You can no, have no, your friend. No, you do not go. No, no, my friend. You must do something for us first. Well, I guess I'll play your game. You caught the leprechaun. What do you want? You must tell us everything we need to know. Everything you know about. What the fuck is that guy's name? Clarkson. Guys, thank you, Clarkston. No, him. Uh, he's a black market dealer who does mostly cursed things. He's in the mercenary district. Um, anything else? Who does? Those are, those are common things. Those are not things that that are worth not going directly to the authorities with you. No. Uh, um. Yes. I would also ask for a boon. To a chip to call in for later for not turning you into the authorities. She kind of sighs and uh, she flips a uh, small med medallion to you, Tabby. Thank you. One more thing. Where does he, who, who and where does he do business? Not just the black market, but his contacts. You, you definitely keep an eye on him. I'm sure. Oh. So, you, you want to actually find him, find him. Well, I want uh, to find him. I want to know everything he knows. Every person he talked to. Well, that's a web that even I don't have access to. And You have, uh, you have spies. You have eyes everywhere. Of course you would know these things. Oh. But both here and the city, you know everything. Do not lie to me. Well... Tanaxi. I'll take you to my office. These two... I don't trust them. You could just tell us here. Or into this private corner, if you like. Well, let's go to the corner. Thank you for listening to Tales of Swordfall. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Hello, folks. JP Winterbottom here to tell you about The Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons narrative-focused actual play podcast about a group of private investigators in a fantasy noir setting with eldritch horror undertones. You can find The Beholder's Eye every other Friday on iTunes, SoundCloud, or anywhere podcasts are found. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe.